going on, my home studio addicts? Joel from the Home Recording Network here today with a video on throwing some reverb on your saxophone. Now, I'm making this video because someone had asked a question on one of my other videos. So I've been making content for maybe a year and a half now, and my most popular video is about mixing saxophone. I get a ton of people watching it every day, so super glad it's helping people out. But saxophone is not actually something I mix that often, so I'm just kind of surprised, but it seems like there's a lot of people out there recording their own saxophone. So in this video, and I'll put a link to this other tutorial I made on mixing saxophone, but I had someone ask, what reverb do you have on the saxophone? And I went back and I, I thought about the video and I said, oh, I don't even know if I went over any of the effects I used on the saxophone. And I figured, well, I can just make a quick video and answer that question and show what kind of reverb I was actually using. So real quick, I'll just play you the sax from the other tutorial. Yeah, 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 so if you want to see how I ended up with that sound, go back and watch that other tutorial. It's actually a pretty dramatic difference uh, from when we actually recorded it in the studio. Uh, but let's let's check out the effects we have on this. So here's our, our sax, and they're being sent to bus 27 and 28, which are right here, the sax verb and sax delay. So I just have a little bit of reverb and delay on it. So I'll talk about the reverb first and I will just mute this delay right here. Yeah, so let's let's check out how the reverb sounds first. So I, I don't usually put so much reverb on things, but this there's a ton of reverb on this. And hey, I mixed this a long time ago. And, you know, my techniques have changed a lot since this mix, but let's just mute the verb and play it and then I'll bring it in. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just huge, and it's, it's got a real long tail on it as well. So there's two plugins on this bus. The first one's obviously the reverb, and then the second one's just a little bit of EQ, and I'll show you a nice trick with EQ and reverb after this. But I'm just using this Lustrious Plates reverb here, and this is a reverb that comes with the Slate Digital Everything Bundle. I like this reverb because it's it's just a pretty simple reverb. It's just got a bunch of plates in it, a bunch of plate reverbs that it's easy to kind of just sort through and see if anything's sounding good. I think maybe I have maybe about three just go-to reverb plugins. You know, it's always nice to have a few go-tos because you don't you don't want to have 10 reverb plugins and, and be going through a million sounds every time. <laughs> you go to throw some reverb into a mix. It's nice to have just a couple that you know sound good and you know that you like. So this reverb time damper is really the decay of the reverb. And this is all the way up at four seconds and that's just really long. So if you want a really big reverb, um, you know, four seconds is usually where I'm at. Usually I'm down maybe closer to two or even one. Uh, but like I said, in this case, for whatever reason, I went really big. So let's just have a listen to the reverb here. Yeah, so if you are using a reverb bus like I am, I never really put any reverb plugins directly on the instruments. I always like to 
use a bus and feather it in. Just make sure you have your mix knob set all the way to wet because you don't want any of the dry sound in here. You just want purely the reverb sound on your bus, right? So we're only getting the dry sound from the actual sax track, and then all the wet is coming from this sax verb bus. So this was actually just a preset I used. So I went down to strings and I just chose the bright symphony. And next, what I do with probably about 90% of my reverb buses is I roll off the top end because this is going to make the reverb sound further away and that just sounds bigger, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this high cut all the way up so it's not doing anything, play the reverb, and I'll bring this down and you can hear how it starts to sound a little bit further away, which is cool. And there we go. As you can see, as I brought that down, it starts to sound very different, it starts to sound further away because in the real world, when we're far away from a sound, the high end dies off. So that's what we're trying to emulate here. Next, I actually, for whatever reason, bumped up the low end of the reverb. And I like to do this a lot of times on reverbs on drums, really pump up that low end of the actual reverb bus uh, because it can sound huge. I'm not sure why I did it here again. This mix was a long time ago. So after the reverb, we just have this sax delay. And I believe I just, yeah, I just put a quarter note delay on it. Barely any feedback here. So we're just getting maybe one delay. And uh, let's hear what it sounds like. So I will mute the reverb so you can hear it. And we'll listen. Yeah, and nothing special going on there at all. Like I said, just a quarter note delay on uh, both sides here. No stereo technique. So you could really use any delay plugin for that. But again, this is just feathered in overall with the sax tone. So here is everything. <laughs> So there you go. Hope that answers that gentleman's question. If anybody else has any questions, I'm happy to answer them or make a video or whatever. So see you later, guys. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to download your free Ultimate Home Studio Mix Guide. I made this for you guys so you could start getting your mixes sounding better. There's a lot of great information in there. And be sure to reach out if you have any questions or if you need any help with your mixes. Thanks.